You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football, a comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerard. Hey, welcome on in. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football as we near the bottom third of the schedule. A lot to get to, a lot to break down in the Big Sky ranks. Great show for you on tap for today. Northern Colorado head coach Ernest Collins, UC Davis quarterback Jake Mayer, as well as Idaho linebacker Caden Ellis. And in our final segment, we wrap things up, as always, with Craig Haley from Stats. So let's recap the games from the previous weekend. Idaho State challenged Liberty from start to finish. Bengals led 24-20 in the third quarter before the Flames were able to take a 48-41 victory. Michael Dean, 210 yards receiving in the game. Northern Colorado picked up its first win of the season as it ousted Northern Arizona 30 to nothing in the second half. They earned the victory 42 to 14. Weber State picked up its second straight win with a victory over Montana State 34-24. Trayshawn Garrett scored three touchdowns in the win for the Wildcats. Idaho kept Southern Utah off the scoreboard for the first three quarters. It defeated the Thunderbirds 31 to 12. Sacramento State fell to North Dakota 41-15 despite Elijah Dotson's 140 yards rushing. And UC Davis scored 52 straight points to drop Cal Poly 52-10 to to remain undefeated in league play. So let's look at your top 25. Big Sky took the 4th, 5th, and 6th spots in the FCS stats poll. Weber State leading the way at number 4. Eastern Washington ranked 5th. And UC Davis climbing into the 6th spot. And with that, let's go out to the phones. Welcome in Northern Colorado head coach Ernest Collins. Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good win for your program on Saturday over Northern Arizona. Let's talk about what your team was able to do, especially on the defensive side, to pick up that W. Yeah, man, it, it was it was a good win, man. It was long overdue. Um, our guys just came out and played together. Uh, what we've been trying to get them to do all year, they came out and played carefree, played together, and stayed together. And uh, you know, it was I, I didn't realize you know until after the game that um, you know we didn't give up anything in the second half. Uh, and that was good for our guys to see, man. Just just coming out, playing together as a family, and, and playing for each other. And it was it was awesome to see. Yeah, you outscored Northern Arizona in that second half, thirty to nothing. Obviously, defense had it rolling, but offensively, what were you able to do to generate that kind of production? Uh, just you know, getting the ball. Um, the different guys. We had our run game going a little bit, and, and uh, you know, Milo Hall was able to uh, make some plays on the ground, and, and uh, you know, then. Uh, you, you know, Keith Mott's back in there, and he's swinging the ball around and getting it to different receivers. And, you know, we hit quite a few guys, and we had some guys step up and make some plays. You know, Dante Warren and, and Willie uh, Fairman, and, you know, just guys making plays. And that's the thing that, that's been lacking this year is just making the plays when we needed to make them. And, and we made the plays in that second half and, and was able to pull out the victory. Alex Wesley continues to put up big numbers. What about his game that allows him to pick up big numbers week after week, even though he's probably the focal point of a lot of uh, – defensive coordinators yeah west is just a competitor man he, he's a competitor you know that you know a lot of guys you see that they run track um you know they're they're, they're track guys trying to play football well west is a football player that runs track you know and so he, he's tough you know and you don't you don't just you know uh happen to want to run the 400 you got to have a little bit something in you to want to run the 400 and do that your career is running track and so i think he brings that mentality you know, to the football field. He's just a flat-out competitor. That's that's the best thing I can say about A. West. He's a competitor. When you're out there recruiting, do you like going uh, and finding guys that are multi-sport athletes? Yeah, I don't mind it at all because, you know, you know that, that those guys, um, it, it's very it's rare that you get a, a multi-sport athlete in, in high school that will come and be a multi-sport player yeah. in college because it's hard. Um, but I do like it because, I, you know, a lot of people are getting to where they're, they're doing the single sport and they're focusing on this, but there's a lot of muscles you got to use when you are a basketball player and football player, or a baseball player and a football player, or or track and football. And so, I don't mind it at all. Just to understand that there's if they're going to try to do it in college, there's more going to be put on them, and you got to be mature enough to handle it. Yeah, that's a great point. Northern Colorado is your alma mater. Do you talk about what it's like to be? I mean, you share stories with your your players as what it was like when you were a player there, and does it mean a little something extra when you're the head coach of a of the school that you went to? Oh, no question, because it's not like, uh, you know, this place helped me, grew me up. Um, I had great opportunity to come here and play ball and, and get my education, and, and it is. It's really special to me. Uh, if the Lord left me here for the rest of my career, I'd be A-OK -okay with that. And a lot of guys are, you know, you come to certain places, you just kind of stepping stone type deal. But yeah. 
Um, I love this place with all my heart and soul. And so it, it, it is special to me, and, and I try to get our players to understand that it could be special for you if you just buy into what's going on here on and off the field. Um, it could be a really special place for you. Your team travels to Cedar City this weekend to take on Southern Utah. What have you seen from the Thunderbirds on film that maybe doesn't show up in their record? Because I know they're not having the season record-wise that uh, they would have hoped. Yeah, they're fighting just like we are, man. Um, battling some some quarterback issues themselves, and and uh, it, it's tough, man. It's tough when you got injuries and things like that. But I know Mario was doing. He, Coach Warren is going through the same thing that that we've been going through, and and you can see them fighting and scrapping uh, every game. And so, um, but that's Big Sky football. You know, every week you're going to be in for a battle uh, when you're playing Big Sky football, and, and this week is no different. Um, I, I I I feel his pain um, when you're talking about, you know, just. Trying to get the guys to to you know to to to, to just you know to, to get going and what's going on, believe in what's going on, and, and play as a family and play for one another. And uh, you can see it; they're fighting, they're scrapping, and so it's not like it's just somebody you know you're going to go in and, and, and get a victory with with anybody in this conference. And so you got to be ready to go every week, week in and week out, no matter what the records are. What are your keys for this weekend? What do you need to do to come out of there with a W? For us, it's the same thing we've been preaching, and we finally got it this last weekend. Just play together, stay together. Don't try to make a play. The defense and the offense special team is designed for you to make the play that you're supposed to make. And so it's just it's really about doing your 111 and accepting that. And it's not about extraordinary plays. It's about doing your job. And, and when you do your job and everybody's doing their job, extraordinary things happen. So it's just about to doing my 111. That's, that's what we're trying to get out of our guys. Coach, always fun to catch up with you. Keep it rolling this weekend. Looking forward to catching up with you again here soon. Hey, no problem. It's my pleasure. You got it. Northern Colorado head coach Ernest Collins. Bears will take on Southern Utah this Saturday. That's a 6 o'clock mountain kickoff time. Take a break. Come back. Segment number two, UC Davis quarterback Jake Mayer will be on the program. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for Big Sky action. The leading free internet television service in America will stream live sporting events, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for all Big Sky action. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. And welcome back. Segment number two here on This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. Remember, Pluto TV is your leading free internet television service in America. Now, as part of that deal, the Big Sky Conference will air all of its live stream sporting events on Pluto TV for free, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to watch Big Sky on Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. All right, let's go out to the phones. Welcome in UC Davis quarterback Jake Mayer. Jake, how you doing? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, appreciate you carving out a few moments for us. Uh, what a year it's been for you and your teammates. You're six and one. Four regular season uh, games left to go. Uh, let's go back a couple weeks. I want to talk about that overtime win against Idaho State. What was that game like, okay. and how much fun was that to play in? Uh, those those are the games that make you you know really love football. It's, something that you really look forward to as a kid, you know, playing in those big moments. And I think that was just a really big step for our program to be able to, to win in front of our fans and, and uh, really, really uh, give us momentum to finish out this year strong. Well, it seems like uh, you guys handle adversity well because this past weekend you guys are down 10, uh, 10 points and then uh, just go on to score 52 consecutive points to win the game. How do you manage to stay right. composed uh, when you're maybe dealing with a little bit of adversity? Uh, well, we understand that it's a long game, and you're, you're always going to have ups and downs. But uh, one thing that we're really trying to eliminate is kind of that that last, you know, throughout games. We're trying to stay more consistent, and and uh, you know, really in those situations when, when we're when we're reeling and struggling a little bit, it really just comes back to us and and our execution. You know, we feel like if we just uh, execute our plays the way they're supposed to be run, then then we're we're, we're going to put ourselves in a really good situation. So it just all comes back to us. We really just focus on us and. Uh, executing at a high level for four quarters throughout the game because in, in our mind, um, you know, even though we've won a lot of games, we, we feel like we haven't really played a complete game yet. So 
that's that's always been a point of emphasis for us. Uh, hopefully, to finish out the year with with more complete games. I heard a I heard a coach say once that a coach led team can be good, but a player led team can be great. When you're feel, dealing right. when you're dealing with some of that adversity, how much of that needs to come from the locker room and from the players to say, look, let's get through this, let's fix this, and let's get it right. Well, I mean, it's, it's the players that that are on the field, right? You know, it's, it's the players that are going through. Uh, they're they're really thrown in the fire and going through the the adversity throughout a game. So it's really important. Luckily for us, um, we have key key veteran guys in, in really important positions on the field for us. So um, whenever the times start to get tough, you know, we really lean on those guys to to kind of dig us out of that hole, make some plays. Uh, you know, and a lot of it doesn't have to be. A lot of it that really, really have to do, you know, verbally. Yeah. Not, not much really has to be said because everybody, you know, everybody wants to play well and everybody wants to succeed. A lot of it just just comes back to going back to to what made us great and uh, just focusing on 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 those little things. You know, it's it just all goes back to the, you know, day one fundamentals for us. And once we get back into that, that, that that's when we kind of uh, get ourselves back in a groove. And, and you know, once we get in a groove, we're, we're really really difficult. So. What's it like been playing? What's it like uh, this year playing in front of that home crowd? Because it seems like the community's really caught fire as well with this team. Yeah, the the uh, the the Aggie Aggie uh, fans have, have been coming out um, a lot more this year. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the alumni support that we have. Um, you know, we, we get hundreds of alumni every weekend to come out and support us. Uh, they're they're really they really feel like the program is has been re- rejuvenated and. Um, yeah, it's just awesome. It's just a great environment. That's what college football is. College football is is uh, is all about you know home home field advantage and and uh, you know we we have something going really really good here at Davis. You have a lot of offensive threats on that team, and as a quarterback, that's a that's a lot of mouths to feed. How do you make sure you keep everybody at the uh, dinner table feeling pretty good about things? That's uh, that just that, that more has to do with uh, our game plan and putting guys in certain in certain spots in order to be successful. And that, that's, that's a big credit to our, our offensive staff. They do a great job at, like you said, making sure all the mouths are fed because there's so many great players on our team <laughs> that um, any, any, any one of, you know, the five or six guys that get majority of the, of the catches or the, or the carries, you know, they, they, they can make a big play at any moment. So, um, and, and, you know, another great thing about them too is that they, they love to see each other succeed. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, negative competitive spirit in that, you know, they, they're they're just as excited to see each other score as when they score. So you know that that culture that we created here is is really really big, and uh, you know we're, we're just looking to keep that going because if we get everybody involved, you know we're unpredictable and and uh, we could be a nightmare. So how is how have you grown and matured as a quarterback during your tenure there? Um, well, you just learn something about yourself every game that you're in. You know the mistakes that you make year one are usually not mistakes that you make year two. So that's really been my uh, focus, you know, coming into this season, I wanted to turn the ball over less, and I feel like we've done that as an offense uh, very well so far. And uh, you know, just just sticking with your progressions and getting more experience with that, and seeing more blitzes, and and knowing what the defense is going to do before it happens is is really really critical at the quarterback position. So I feel like um, I found a way to uh, get better at that, and, uh, and there's tons of room for improvement. So uh, that, that's 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 what I've been working on. Missoula probably, well, arguably the hardest place to play in the conference, uh, depending on the year. This no different right. this year. What's it like? What do you? I guess what are the keys that you, uh, your, you and your team need to do to come out of there with a W? Uh, the key is just you know just focus on us. You know we talk about it all the time. It's it's all about um, how well we play and how well we execute. You know the the noise and the and the external factors. Um, uh, you know, should not be a problem. You know, because you know, the more you worry about that stuff, the less you're the less you're worrying about the fundamentals that you that you learn from practice. And you know, we just want to make sure that it's all it's about us. And uh, if we put our best foot forward, then then uh, we really like our chances. But that's a very good team. It's a um, very worthy opponent, and I know they're going to be ready. So you know, we, we gotta we gotta be ready for everything they got. Well, Jake, we appreciate it. It's been a great conversation. Uh, Congrats on the early success. Keep it rolling. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks for having me. You got it. UC Davis, Jake Mayer, right here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Caden Ellis is going to join us next as we continue on right here on This Week in Big Sky Football.
CenturyLink Arena plays host to the 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships in Boise. Postseason college basketball is back in Boise, and we have your front row seat to the event. The women's tournament will be held March 11th through the 15th, while the men's championship will take place March 13th through the 16th. The wait is over. 22 teams, 20 games, two champions. Don't miss your chance to buy tickets for this fun-filled week of basketball. Tickets are on sale now at BigSkyInBoise.com. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. It's time to announce our Root Sports Players of the Week. Let's start on the offensive side. Idaho State's Michael Dean had six receptions for a career-high 210 yards as the Bengals uh, lose on the road to Liberty, but what a game it was. He is your Big uh, Big Sky Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, By the way, averaged 35 yards per catch, the second most in FCS this season of anyone over 200 yards. Northern Colorado's Luke Nelson guided Northern Colorado to its first win of the season. Named the Root Sports Defensive Player of the Week. Finished the game with nine tackles, eight of them solo. Also forced a fumble that led to a team safety and had an interception that led to a touchdown. Idaho's Cade Coffey named the Root Sports Special Teams Player of the Week. Converted all four of his uh, point-after attempts. Also connected on an 18-yard field goal. Uh, and then he also averaged 51.8 yards on eight punts and also booted an 80-yard punt. Had six kickoffs for 390 yards and an average of 65 yards per kick. That's a busy day at the office. Remember, Root Sports, your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. Let's go back out to the phones. Welcome in Idaho's Caden Ellis. Caden, how you doing, man? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Hey, it's a family affair at Idaho with your dad coaching the defensive line, your brother Christian in that linebacking group. What's it like having the family so close together? Man, it's super fun. It's uh, it's awesome getting to be with your family out there on that gridiron. So it, it's a lot of fun, man. Uh, does your dad treat you about a, the same as every other player on that team or a little harder, maybe a little easier? What's it like? Um, I'd say it's pretty hard on me sometimes. You know, he uh, expects a lot out of me, my brother, but um, – he knows how to get the best out of us, so having him here is a blessing because it uh, it really does push us each and every day. Yeah, there's no doubt. And then when you uh, play alongside your younger brother, I got to imagine that's good for both of you to be able to bounce ideas off each other and and you know from a competitive standpoint, try to make each other better. Exactly. Yeah, he's the um, most competitive person I've ever met. So getting to be around him is is really awesome, and getting to feel his fire and his passion each and every day, especially out there on that football field, is. It's something truly special. So getting to play alongside him, I mean, there's nothing better. What's the transition been for you and this team as you're, you know, playing a lot of these big sky teams for the first time? What's that been like? You know, it's been really interesting. Um, a lot of extra film study because you don't have uh, bases off of them from years prior, you know. Um, so it's it's a lot of extra film study, but it's it's been a lot of fun because uh, getting to play teams nearby, getting to have fans excited to uh, – to actually know the teams that we're playing um, and get to see some old rivalries, maybe uh, some rivalries that are going on in basketball or uh, soccer or any other sport. It's, it's just really cool getting to uh, getting to play these teams and um, getting to stay uh, near home. So it's, it's been awesome. You know, from a selfish standpoint, I grew up in Idaho, and I remember the you know the Idaho State or Idaho State Idaho rivalry and and Idaho uh-huh. Idaho uh, Montana rivalries, and it's been fun mm-hmm. seeing those things be revisited. What's the community? Are they embracing those rivalries as well as they as as you guys jump back into the Big Sky? Yeah, they definitely are. I mean, it's it's been really really cool. Um, I know we didn't play the way we wanted to down at Idaho State, but uh, I mean, all the tickets we got, we sold out. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of been like that for for all the games. And, I mean, I can't wait for the Montana game. I can't wait for this Eastern game. Um, it, it's it's really cool getting to play some, some old rivals. It's it's really fun. You were a uh, quarterback in high school. Do you miss playing on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, every now and then, you know. But I, I can't really throw. So uh, <laughs> it's just kind of kind of how it goes. But uh, Coach P gets me in there every now and then. So it, it's fun. So when uh, when they show up at your door and they're uh, and Idaho's recruiting you, they they made no bones about it that you'd be playing on the defensive side, correct? Yes, yeah. They they told me that uh, it was either linebacker. I mean, Coach Rapunu, our old tight ends coach, did say yeah. it was possibly going to be a tight end tight end thing. But uh, no, it's it's been linebacker, and and I've loved it so much. What's the best thing about playing on the defensive side of the ball? What do you enjoy the most? Just the like tenacity, you know, the passion that you get to play with. You don't. Offense, you got to be a little more disciplined. Defense, you you just get to fly and hit, and, uh, <laughs> and just you play kind of unleashed. You know, you got to react off what they're doing, and then do your job as fast as you can, and hit them as hard as you can. So it, it's a lot of fun. 
You played Eastern Washington on Saturday. You mentioned uh, resuming that rivalry. What's the keys to uh, beating the Eagles in this game? Because especially on the defensive side, they'd love to get up and down the field. Yeah, they do. So, um, you know, you just got to try to contain them the best you can. You really, really uh, stop that run game because uh, they're, they're pretty powerful in it. Um, I mean, Weaver gave us a great idea what to do, and there have been some other teams that have played them really close, but uh, they're a good team that's going to be a fun challenge. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You ready to get on that red turf? Yeah, I am. I'm one on one blue. So there you go. One on one in red too. I love it. Hey, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, and good luck this weekend. Thank you, sir. Have a great one. University of Idaho. Good, good young man, Caden Ellis, right here on this week in Big Sky Football. They take on Eastern Washington on Saturday. It's a noon Pacific kickoff in Cheney. All right, we'll come back. Final segment of the show. We'll chat with Stats Craig Haley. Also note where you can find all the Big Sky games on Pluto TV this weekend. Stay with us. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. The 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships are headed to Boise. Buy your tickets now for a fun-filled week with basketball for all to enjoy. Purchase your tickets today by visiting BigSkyInBoise.com. That's BigSkyInBoise.com. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Welcome on back. You're listening to the final segment here on this edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. All right, busy weekend of games coming up, so let's break them down. The action continues with your 11 sports game of the week as Idaho State will host Montana State at 335 Mountain. Your root sports game of the week will feature Idaho at Eastern Washington. That game will kick off at noon Pacific. Just had a previous conversation with uh, Caden Ellis as he gets ready for that showdown against the Eagles. The rest of the games this week can be found on Pluto TV by downloading the app on your smartphone, tablet, or TV. Weber State will play at North Dakota at 2 o'clock Central. Montana hosts UC Davis at 2 o'clock Mountain Time. Later in the day, Northern Arizona will host Cal Poly at 4 o'clock Pacific Time. Southern Utah hosts Northern Colorado at 6 Mountain and Sacramento State hosts Portland State. That game, a 6 o'clock Pacific start time. Another crazy weekend in FCS football, and only one man can break it all down. It's the FCS senior editor of stats, the one and only Craig Haley. Craig, how you doing? I'm doing well, Scott. I'm, I'm hoping the big sky is as fun this week as it was last week, it, and I'm sure it will be. It just never seems to disappoint. Every week there's always something crazy going on. So let's talk about these games. Northern Colorado picked up its first win of the season, while Northern Arizona – Seemed to just fall apart, and uh, you know you saw Northern Colorado score outscore Northern Arizona thirty to nothing in the second half. What what did you see in that game, and what was going on there? Yeah, well, obviously it was it was unsettling for NAU to be w- without some players, and, and you know starting its third different quarterback, you know uh, Gino Capiotti. At the same time, you know Northern Colorado just blew NAU's doors off in the second half, as you mentioned. So they clearly wanted it more when you're going for your first win. You know, they've, they've played such a diff- difficult schedule, been competitive much of the way. Uh, I just think it was inevitable that the Bears would, would have a win like this. UC Davis rattles off 52 unanswered in their win at Cal Poly. What do you think of the Aggies' ability on offense to settle in and, and score points when necessary? Yeah, you know, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, they do score points, you know, almost at will. I you know, I think it comes down to UC Davis having so many weapons on offense. I mean, you know, a defense can concentrate on Keelan Doss, but, you know, Jake Mayer is going to spread the ball around, you know, Ulonzo Gilliam, Jared Harrell, you know, certainly Wesley Priest. I mean, they all have to be accounted for. And, you know, as many times as they look to pass this year, UC Davis has only allowed seven sacks. So the line is giving Mayer a chance to, to move them downfield consistently. And, and as you mentioned, they can almost score at will. You know, we talked to Jake Mayer earlier in the show, and he mentioned that you know they uh, you know they were down earlier in the year and came back and got the win against Idaho State, and then they were down last week and and then came back and got the W in convincing fashion. And he said nothing really seems to phase us anymore. We can handle pretty much anything that's uh, getting thrown at us. How impressed are you with this UC Davis team, and how what can we expect from them the rest of the year? Well, th- that's the sign of a good team that you don't get rattled. You you play as a mature group with, with a common goal, and, and they're united to, to take this as far as they can. And right now they're 
they're focused on winning the conference title. I mean, certainly a tough game this week with Montana, and, and they have to go to Eastern Washington as well. But, you know, every game is winnable out there that they have, but, you know, even though they could lose some of these. But, you know, they're united, and, and they're going to, you know, stay composed. Idaho State had a third quarter lead, ended up scoring 41 points and only lost by seven to Liberty. Uh, do you take some positives away from Idaho State in that in that game against Liberty? Very much so. I mean, uh, you know, to, to lose by seven to any F, FBS team is tremendous. And, um, you know, to do it on the road a week after going on the road to UC Davis, that's just a tough haul. And to, uh, to be in both games and to, to have a shot, you know, you have to give them credit. You know, right now they need to win games, you know, starting this week with Montana State and really build that playoff resume again. I mean, they, they certainly wouldn't be in if it started today. But I, I just think, you know, they have an offense that can just, you know, put up points either way, running the ball or passing it. So they just have to go out and get it done at this point. Three big Sky teams in the top ten. And to be exact, they take up the number four, number five, and number six spots. What's your take on those three teams? Well, it's well earned. Uh, great news for the Big Sky. I think I'm pretty sure it's the highest spots ever for Weber State and, and UC Davis. And you know, obviously Eastern Washington is just an FCS staple. Now, we've talked before that there's a handful of teams right out, right, right there behind North Dakota State that you know are, are bunched together. They're going to move up and down week to week in, in the poll. You know, all, all three of these teams have difficult games this week if, if you want to consider, you know, Easter uh, with a rivalry opponent in, in, in Idaho. But when, when you arrive at four, five, and six, like, you know, the, these three teams have this, this week, you, you, you want to go out the following game and, and really back it up. And I think that's the chance here in the, in the big sky with these three teams. How, uh, how impressed are you with Weber State so far this season? I, you know, they, they, they've sold me. Uh, I've been a little worried about their offense. You know, obviously everybody has. I mean, it's, you know, going to take, uh, you know, Jake uh, Constantine to, to, to settle down and, and get it going consistently. But at the same time, when you, when you have a two-headed monster in the backfield running the ball, you have a, a defense that know how, knows how to get it done. I mean, they've built a good resume here. Uh, with, with a couple of these wins, um, you know, Eastern Washington and, and, you know, beating Montana State's a great win, obviously beating uh, South Dakota earlier this year. You know, here's another one this week. I mean, going to North Dakota, that's yeah. a tough game in, in a dome. They can obviously win it, but, uh, you know, they have to get it done, and, and I think it starts with, with getting the quarterback right. But this team has really sold me, I, I think, they can perhaps win win the conference, even though they do have a tough schedule ahead. How do you compare the Big Sky to maybe some of the other top conferences right now? Well, the Big Sky is definitely uh, third um, behind you know Missouri Valley and the CAA, which are almost one one A. I mean, these, those two conferences have been so strong in the last you know couple of decades, if you will, that any other conference should be thrilled at number three, and I, I think the Big Sky has earned it this year. I mean, the Southland and, and Southern conferences are, are so parity-driven this year that, it, it, you know, it really makes the Big Sky's four, five, and six in the poll stand out even more. So I, I think it's been a, a, a strong year for the Big Sky. You know, obviously they want to get a, a four team in the playoffs. Right now the best chance would be Idaho if they can, you know, really win out. But uh, no matter what, when you've got four, five, and six in the poll, that's tremendous. Craig, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks so much for your time, and look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks so much, Scott. You got it. Craig Haley, FCS Director of Stats. Also, big thanks to Northern Colorado's Ernest Collins, UC Davis' Jake Mayer, and Idaho's Caden Ellis for joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Also, thanks to our producer Lloyd Cole and executive producer Denise Thompson. I'm Scott Gerard. We'll be back with you next week for another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football.